witches, a long time no see, and I realize this Witchy Wisdom Wednesday video on practical banishments is a day or two late. Very sorry about that. As you know, <laughs> I had been traveling quite a bit. At first I came to Ohio, I stayed here for almost a month, I picked up my grandkids, I took them back to California with me. And then we drove from one end of the coast to the other end of the coast. And then a few days after we got back to our home in California, my husband informed me we were coming back to Ohio. And so here we are. It's really got my schedule messed up. It's not an excuse. It just is what it is. So with all that said, let me go on and introduce you to all the ladies of the Witchy Wisdom Wednesday. Since you've met all the ladies of the Witchy Wisdom Wednesday, make sure you go check out their pages. Their links will be in the description box, or if it's easier, at the end of the video, you will find all of the Witchy Wisdom Wednesday videos on the playlist. This cute little kitty was climbing up on my lap. She is just a little thing with a big old attitude. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, make sure you... <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into this. This video today is about practical banishments. However, I don't typically banish things. Um, not people, not bad attitudes, not um, bad habits or anything of that. However, I do banish spirits from homes and that can be a poltergeist, um, a, a nasty spirit, a passed over a person who um, did not move on like they should have. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to let you know right now that I am not going to tell you how to do a spiritual banishment of that magnitude. And the story I'm about to tell you will explain why. All right, so my sister rented this house. And I told her before she rented it that it was not a good idea because it definitely had these creepy vibes. Even my mother, who does not believe in any of the stuff <laughs> that I do, said it was creepy. It was just like when you went to the house, you could feel the, the malevolence there. It was bad. So my sister didn't listen to me and then she moved in anyway because she said she didn't feel anything. Well. A few days later, she's begging me to come there and help her. And after I told her so, because yes, she's my sister, and I did tell her so. <laughs> no, I really did do that, but I was throwing it in there because it is, I mean, it's really not a laughing matter, but now that I look back on it, I can laugh about it. And I did tell her so. Um, anyhow, I will stop rambling and try to get right into this. Um, I told her that I would be there and I did and we set it up. So the directions I gave her was to stick with me. And of course I took my two young daughters because as some of you probably do know, if you've been following me for a while, I am very much hands-on and I teach my kids uh, age appropriate, obviously. Like my little granddaughter is only four. And at the time when I did the video with her, she was three. She was learning all about the craft. So um, anyhow, back to my story because as you also know I ramble a lot <laughs> and get off track uh, okay so my daughters and my sister and I are there and I'm showing them what I'm doing and I'm teaching them how to do this um, not that I would have ever allowed my daughters to do it yet but you know they would need to learn if they're going to ever do it one day so here we are we're doing it and I told my sister I don't care if your phone rings I don't care if someone knocks on the door you cannot open the door don't answer your phone as a matter of fact just turn it off whatever what have you um well she did not listen and I had I started upstairs and I'm working my way down the stairs and as I come down the stairs 
Lo and behold, somebody knocks on the door, and what does she do? She answers the door, even though I repeatedly told her not to. She will never do that again, because as she and the person at the door and my two daughters witnessed, the spirit picked me up off of my feet and flung me into the wall. After I regained myself, I did finish what I was doing and removed the spirit from her house. However, because she made an opening, the spirit then followed me to my house. Now, before I get to that part, let me just say this. When, when you're working with a spirit, you should probably be a little bit energy sensitive, which I am, and know whether it's a poltergeist, a nasty spirit from a different dimension, <laughs> or um, a spirit that passed over that's on a different plane, but still its existence is a well-known here. In this uh, case, I couldn't quite tell if it was just the poltergeist or if it was a man because it was definitely a masculine energy. However, a poltergeist can feel masculine too if the poltergeist was made from the negative energy of a man or his actions. Sorry, the cat one's up here again. <laughs> and she's just a kitten, so we need to <laughs> take care of her. But anyway, so then... With that said, let me go on and tell you what happens. The spirit follows me home, which then I had to magically cleanse my house as well, or spiritually cleanse it, whichever way you want to say it. And I could keep the spirit out of my house, but then I had to do stuff to my property as well and get the spirit to move on to where it needs to go. I'm pretty sure it was the man spirit that had lived in the house because later on I did go do some research and the man that lived there was extremely abusive, physically, emotionally, and sexually to his his wife and his children I did not know that when I started I probably should have researched it but I mean it is what it is and it's over now so I definitely have way more knowledge and you know um, that was probably my fifth or sixth um, spiritual removing or getting rid of a spirit inside of somebody's dwelling that was successful however that one wasn't nearly as successful because people did not follow directions and I don't want it to come off condescending or whatever but I would not teach somebody how to do that unless I was there to really teach them and show them so we can talk about the um, banishment as I said, and you know, ex uh, share that experience with you, but I will not teach um, somebody over the internet how to do a cleansing of a home simply because it could be dangerous. I mean, spirits can hurt you. Most of them won't, most of them are benign, but this particular spirit was powerful enough to pick me up and throw me off my feet. So, I mean, it does happen. Let's go on to a different one. Um, my friend uh, had rented a house and just in her bathroom, there that's where the spirit tend to linger. I The house had been remodeled, so maybe it hadn't been a bathroom prior to that, but I mean, you know, it was, you could just feel it. <laughs> that was a female energy and a child at that. So I did help her do um, to remove the spirit but in this case I helped her remove the spirit to the next plane of existence or um, it's afterlife or whatever she, the child in this instance was a female child she was lingering because she felt lost and things like that so that one was a, a happy moment for myself unlike the other one I described to you because in this instance I was able to help a child move on and go where she needed to go and not stay here and just freeze the bathroom which is all she did she was not harmful like she would touch the children's toys in the house of course especially the ones in the bathroom but you know so I hope that all made sense <laughs> I feel like I sped through this a little bit but maybe I was a little less rambly than usual anyway um I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll talk soon which is